Which of the following is the recommended compression to ventilation ratio for a patient in cardiac arrest without an advanced airway in place? A. 15 colon 2. B. 30 colon 2. C. 5 colon 1. D. 20 colon 2. Answer B. For adult patients in cardiac arrest without an advanced airway, the correct compression to ventilation ratio is 30 to 2. This ensures adequate circulation and oxygenation. What is the first drug administered during adult pulseless ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation arrest after CPR and defibrillation? A. Epinephrine. B. Amiodarone. C. Atropine. D. Adenosine. Answer A. Epinephrine 1 mg 4 slash IO every 3 to 5 minutes is the first drug administered after CPR and shock attempts during pulseless VT slash VF. Which of the following is the appropriate dose of amiodarone in cardiac arrest? A. 150 mg 4 bolus. B. 300 mg 4 push, then 150 mg if needed. C. 6 mg rapid 4 push. D. 0.5 mg 4 every 3 to 5 minutes. Answer B. The first dose of amiodarone in cardiac arrest is 300 mg 4 push. A second dose of 150 mg may be given if the rhythm persists. A 58 year old male presents with bradycardia and hypotension. What is the first line treatment? A. Epinephrine drip. B. Defibrillation. C. Atropine 1 mg 4. D. Synchronized cardioversion. Answer C. Atropine 1 mg 4 every 3 to 5 minutes is the first line drug for symptomatic bradycardia. The maximum dose is 3 mg. What is the preferred method for confirming endotracheal tube placement? A. Chest rise observation. B. Auscultation of lungs. C. Capnography, ETCO2. D. Fogging in the tube. Answer C. Continuous waveform capnography is the most reliable method to confirm and monitor correct endotracheal tube placement. Which rhythm requires synchronized cardioversion? A. Ventricular fibrillation. B. Asystole. C. Pulseless VT. D. Unstable supraventricular tachycardia. Answer D. Unstable SVT with signs like hypotension or altered mental status requires immediate synchronized cardioversion. Which of the following is a shockable rhythm? A. Asystole. B. P. C. Ventricular fibrillation. D. Sinus bradycardia. Answer C. Only ventricular fibrillation and pulseless VT are considered shockable rhythms in cardiac arrest. How often should chest compressions be switched during high performance CPR? A. Every 5 minutes. B. Every 1 minute. C. Every 2 minutes. D. Every 10 minutes. Answer. C. Rescuers should rotate compressors every two minutes to prevent fatigue and maintain high-quality CPR. During a code, what is the recommended compression depth for adult patients? A. At least 1 inch. B. 2.5 to 3.5 inches. C. At least 2 inches. D. 1.5 inches. Answer. C. Compressions should be at least 2 inches, 5 centimeters, deep but not more than 2.4 inches for effective CPR. What is the ACLS recommendation for oxygen saturation in post-cardiac arrest care? A. 70% to 80%. B. Greater than or equal to 94%. C. 100% at all times. D. No oxygen needed. Answer. B. 
maintain oxygen saturation greater than or equal to 94% during post-resuscitation care to avoid hypoxia and ensure tissue oxygenation. What is the treatment for torsades de points? A. Atropine B. Epinephrine C. Magnesium sulfate D. Amiodarone Answer, C. Magnesium sulfate 1 to 2 G4 diluted in 10 mL D5W is the drug of choice for torsades de points. Which action has the highest priority in the management of asystole? A. Immediate defibrillation. B. Starting CPR. C. Amiodarone 4. D. Atropine 4. Answer, B. CPR must be started immediately. Asystole is non-shockable, so defibrillation is not indicated. What is the recommended rate of chest compressions in adult CPR? A. 60-80-min B. 80-100-min C. 100-120-min D. Over 140 per minute Answer, C. Effective CPR requires a compression rate of 100 to 120 per minute. What is the most common cause of PA? A. Hypovolemia B. Hypokalemia C. Hyperthermia D. Hypoglycemia Answer, A. Hypovolemia is one of the reversible causes, HS and TS, of pulseless electrical activity. A patient in cardiac arrest achieves ROSC. What is the next priority? A. Check capillary refill. B. Administer atropine. C. Optimize oxygenation and ventilation. D. Administer epinephrine. Answer. C. After ROSC, ensure the patient maintains adequate oxygenation and ventilation to prevent further deterioration. Which drug is used to treat narrow complex tachycardia if the patient is stable? A. Atropine. B. Epinephrine. C. Adenosine. D. Amiodarone. Answer. C. Adenosine 6 mg rapid 4 push is the first line drug for stable narrow complex tachycardia. Which of the following best describes PA? A. Organized rhythm with no pulse. B. Disorganized rhythm with pulse. C. V-fib with no pulse. D. Bradycardia with hypotension. Answer, A. PA is any organized rhythm without a palpable pulse, requiring immediate CPR and search for reversible causes. Which of the following is a sign of return of spontaneous circulation, ROSC? A. Pupil dilation. B. Asystole. C. Sudden increase in ETCO2. D. Absence of breath sounds. Answer. C. A sudden rise in end tidal CO2, typically greater than 40 mm of mercury, often indicates ROSC during resuscitation. What is the appropriate energy dose for biphasic defibrillation in adult VF slash pulseless VT? A. 50 joules. B. 120 to 200 joules. C. 300 to 360 joules. D. 10 joules. Answer, B. The recommended initial dose for biphasic defibrillators is 120 to 200 J. Follow manufacturer guidelines. What is the ACLS recommended fluid for volume resuscitation? A. D5W. B. Normal saline or lactated ringers. C. Half normal saline. D. Dextrin. Answer, B. Isotonic crystalloids such as normal saline or lactated ringers are preferred for volume resuscitation. Which of the following is a reversible cause of cardiac arrest? A. Hypertension. B. Hyperkalemia. C. Hypoglycemia. D. Hyperlipidemia. 
Answer B. Hyperkalemia is one of the H's in the reversible causes of cardiac arrest and must be corrected during resuscitation. In a witness sudden collapse, what should be done first? A. Look for a pulse. B. Start chest compressions. C. Activate emergency response and get AED. D. Give rescue breaths. Answer C. Activating emergency response and getting the AED is the first step in witness sudden collapse before starting CPR. What is the preferred route for drug administration during a code? A. Oral. B. Subcutaneous. C. Intramuscular. D. Intravenous. Answer D. For a route is preferred for rapid drug delivery during cardiac arrest. IO route is alternative if four access is delayed. What is the goal temperature range for targeted temperature management, TTM? A. 33 to 36 degrees Celsius. B. 29 to 31 degrees Celsius. C. 38 to 40 degrees Celsius. D. 36 to 39 degrees Celsius. Answer A. TTM involves maintaining core temperature between 33 to 36 degrees Celsius for 24 hours after ROSC in comatose patients. What is the treatment for unstable wide complex tachycardia? A. Defibrillation. B. Synchronized cardioversion. C. Adenosine. D. Observation only. Answer B. Unstable wide complex tachycardia, VT, requires immediate synchronized cardioversion. During CPR, what is the maximum time compressions should be interrupted? A. 5 seconds. B. 10 seconds. C. 15 seconds. D. 20 seconds. Answer B. Interruptions in chest compressions should be minimized and kept under 10 seconds to maintain perfusion. Which rhythm is typically treated with transcutaneous pacing? A. Pulseless VT. B. Bradycardia unresponsive to drugs. C. Atrial fibrillation. D. Ventricular fibrillation. Answer B. Transcutaneous pacing is used for unstable bradycardia when atropine is ineffective. What is the drug of choice for beta blocker overdose? A. Atropine. B. Glucagon. C. Calcium chloride. D. Epinephrine. Answer B. Glucagon is the antidote for beta blocker toxicity and is used to reverse its cardiac effects. Which of the following should be monitored continuously during CPR? A. Pupils. B. Capillary refill. C. ETCO2. D. Blood glucose. Answer C. Continuous monitoring of end tidal CO2 during CPR provides feedback on compression quality and indicates ROSC. What is the maximum dose of atropine in symptomatic bradycardia? A. 0.5 mg. B. 1 mg. C. 2 mg. D. 3 mg. Answer D. Atropine is given in 1 mg doses every 3 to 5 minutes, with a maximum total dose of 3 mg.